I'm George Crump, lead analyst with Storage Switzerland. Thank you for joining us today. Today we're going to continue our ongoing series of Chalk Talk videos where we deep dive on various topics uh, around the storage industry. Joining me today is Rob Cummings from Tejile. Rob, thanks for joining us today. Thank you. Rob, one of the things that I've seen a lot of uh, lately is, you know, last time you were uh, out on the whiteboard with us, we talked about hybrid storage and things like that. And one of the things we're getting from our viewers is, okay, well, what's the difference between that and just getting a legacy storage and throwing some uh, SSDs in it? Uh, can you kind of walk us through what the differences are? Yeah, we run into it a lot. A lot of people have been running on what I call traditional legacy dual controller architectures for upwards of 15, 20 years now. There's a lot of new architectures coming out that are embracing flash as a key component and it has some big big differences we also see the vendors from those legacy dual control architectures using flash but in an architecture that really holds back the true value that flash offers okay and i'll show you real quick all right um, first and foremost with legacy systems most of them started out as a sand device mm -hmm. or a nas device but have always wanted to deliver the, the value of unified storage. So they're layering on NAS or SAN on top. Right. And that creates its own set of issues. But that's, well, what I find is they typically do one better than the other. Right? right, Yeah. right. That's very, very true. And then they've got a CPU and some RAM up in front. And then a pool of storage that has different classes of performance that kind of balance or traverse the age-old conflict between dollars per gigabyte mm -hmm. and dollars per IOP. Right. And we see sub-volume tiering moving data across these based on what I call I.O. density, how frequently, how frequently is that little region of data being used. So what you're saying is they've added some intelligence here, right? That's right. It's, okay. That's right. And we see on average you see about 3 to 5% of the capacity of a system really needs to be in solid state if you're going to use it as a tier like it is here. Okay. So the system is always doing what I like to call playing Tetris with your data, making sure the right bits are in the right place right. at the right time for the right performance okay. dynamics that's going on. And these, these drives, especially the solid state, are really helping the customer saturate this old architecture faster than they've ever been able to right. before. So it helps, but it doesn't take the customer as far as a fresh approach does. Okay. And isn't that this moving all this data back and forth between these, isn't that like a lot of work for the storage controller too? Sure. I always get as, concerned with that. As data is moving up and down, it's got to go up in here and back down. So you're using CPU and memory cycles up here. Yeah, I, I was with a, another company that did that, and we'd have customers say, my database is actually timing out while that data is traversing because the CPU utilization wow. was so high that the database was actually getting cranky. Right, and you can see time. in a performance-sensitive environment especially that could happen, right? Absolutely. Sure. Yep. Okay, well tell us how hybrid's different. So hybrid's a little bit different, and um, Tejile, we're actually a little bit unique. Most hybrid systems we see out there today have actually picked either iSCSI or NFS most often as their protocol of choice. Okay. And it kind of harkens back to the compellent days where they're um, iSCSI only and had to force fit that system into places maybe it wanted to be, maybe it didn't. So at Teja, we first and foremost, we offer all four protocols as a peer. Okay. Um, but then right below that is what we call MASS, our Metadata Accelerated Storage System okay. engine. And what that does is inline the data path. It drives compression, deduplication, RAID, and snapshot pointers in a dedicated portion of the system outside of the data path. Okay. So when it's doing its math on dedupe hash tables or compressing data, it's not hampering the end user application sitting on top of it. Okay. And a couple things happen from a, an IOPS and um, capacity standpoint. On average, we see customers can get three to five times the effective capacity out of the raw disk they've got in the back end as a, what we like to call effective capacity. Okay. So if they buy a 50 terabyte system of raw capacity, they can typically get 150 to 250 terabytes of effective capacity out of that. And one of the things I remember about you guys is that you're one of the few that do compression and dedupe on all the types of storage, That's right? right. So right. we do it in line without hitting performance. And that's okay. the other neat thing here is we can get 3 to 5x the data in our memory and solid state cache as well. Okay. So we don't use these as a tier here. We use them as a cache. Okay. So we let our cache um, algorithms figure out what data belongs up in there. And then being able to put so much more in there, 
it drives our cash hit ratios up. And on average, on a like configuration or price point, we typically run 7x the performance of a legacy system. Okay. So from a dollars per IOP standpoint, this just does wonders. Okay. And on average, customers are buying oops, 75 percent less capacity than they typically because do. of this compression and deduplication. Right. Okay. You know, those two things are typically held off sure. for backup, an archive, or a post process that you've got to line, land the data, then grind on it. Mm -hmm. We do it very, very early in the data path. Okay, and then I guess because uh, largely because of your mass architecture here, um, I'm not seeing the performance impact that a lot of people would be concerned with either. Correct. Those two, act these two things that traditionally have been, whoa, that's a performance hit. Mm -hmm. To us, it drives that performance increase actually, so it's a boost for us. And then what I did here, just for comparison's sake, is I normalized here in blue a customer requirement, very simple at. 75,000 IOPS okay. and about 100 terabytes of capacity. Okay. You know, those numbers might be plus or minus a couple percent, but just average of averages. Sure. With a hybrid system, you can pack that in a 3U pizza box package mm -hmm. versus two and a half full racks of legacy storage. Okay. So you think about the OPEX and the things from that, and here you see it. Watch. So you're using very dense storage uh, in the HDD level here, I assume, right. plus right. again you got the deduplication and compression. Right. So we use very large two terabyte SAS drives back there, getting okay. that dollars per gigabyte as low as we possibly can. Okay, great. And then in this example here, this system delivering these types of numbers only consumes 840 watts, and it's actually less than a hair dryer. <laughs> And over here, you can see it's 10x that. Right. And then from a pricing standpoint, this would list at $100,000, and this guy would list at about $425,000. Some significant numbers out there. Yeah, that's that's a that's a big difference. So what in in here is um, really driving that? Uh, I mean, obviously, you, you have a kind of a performance advantage because you're doing uh, so much less uh, hardware mm -hmm. to get there. Mm -hmm. And is it, for you guys, is it the, I guess it's really the combination of everything. The mass sort of drives it all, and then you've got DRAM, NSSD, and everything right. else. The closer we can get this up to the top of our stack, mm -hmm. just like there's always value of putting more CPU, more memory in your servers, right. the same thing happens for us. The, the, her, the earlier we can get that up, higher up in the data path, the better. When that stays stuck down here, it's not yielding the performance benefits it could. And then, like we said, you're playing Tetris with your data, mm -hmm. which consumes CPU cycles, whereas we've optimized that and put it in a separate place outside of the data path okay. so it doesn't hit performance. Okay. So you see a lot of the same acronyms and buzzwords right. on both sides of this chart. Sure, absolutely. But it's how it's architected and put together. You can get a much faster system at a much more cost-effective price point. Okay. Well, great. Thanks for coming in and clearing that up for us, Rob. You bet, George. Thank you. Uh, I'm George Crump, lead analyst with Storage Switzerland. Thank you for joining us today. Stay tuned for future videos uh, around all things in storage.